So, hello there. Uh, in this first activity, um, this first database activity for topic three, um, we're going to be looking at the uh, skill, the first skill, uh, the assessment statement for 3.1. Skill one is use of a database or use of a database to determine differences in the base sequence of a gene in two species. Uh, and in this um, activity, I'm going to show you how uh, you can uh, use uh, some information online to actually complete this task. First up, um, I should say that I've adapted this protocol uh, from the Allert and Mindorf uh, Biology uh, uh, International Baccalaureate Diploma Program textbook, uh, where they do have step-by-step uh, -step, um, instructions on how to do this. Uh, I have adapted it slightly um, because I felt uh, when I was preparing this for my students that this was a little bit uh, tricky. Um, so I thought just recording this uh, screencast might make things a little bit easier. So uh, several things you're going to need for this activity. Um, first of all, we'll need to uh, use the GenBank database online um, and more on that in a second. Uh, first of all, though, we'll need to install a piece of software known as X. Uh, and we can use that to analyze the information uh, that we gain from the GenBank uh, database. So, um, first of all, you just need to navigate to the clustal.org website. Uh, we're going to be downloading Clustal X. Um, so, I just click on this link here. And on the, on the page, the landing page here, um, I'm just going to go to uh, the available for download link. And just looking at this list, making sure that I'm using a Mac, so I'm going to download the Mac OS X, but I want the Clustal X program, not the Clustal W. Okay, so that's the Clustal X program. Uh, I'm going to, if you just click on this link, uh, it will start a download for you, which you can install. Now, uh, I've already installed this program myself, so I'm going to go to my launch pad and just type in Clustal X, uh, and I'll launch that so that's ready to run. Okay. So, once we've installed that, uh, the other program that we'll need to use on the Mac, um, and again, it's Notepad on a PC, I believe, uh, but uh, I'm just going to type in text edit, and I'm going to open the text editor. Um, it comes up with, with this box, dialog box. I'm just going to click on new document, uh, and then um, I'll be able to paste my nucleotide sequences that I want to analyze into this document. But first, I need to save it as a plain text file. Okay, so uh, just switch this over by going to, uh, in the text edit menu, to format to, and then um, make, uh, make um, not rich text, I've just done this, but uh, make plain text, there we go. Okay, so now we're ready to roll. The next thing, the last thing we need is uh, some sequences um, to, to uh, determine the differences of. Um, so, while this assessment statement does say uh, a sequence of a gene between two species, um, when I run this, I'm actually going to run it with more than three. Uh, having played around with this myself, uh, I found that um, uh, there's actually a nice link to topic five when we look at cladograms. Uh, and if you've done more than three species here, you can actually use that information to create a phylogenetic tree for you. Um, so you can save these files for use later on in the, in the year. So next step then is to go to the GenBank database, uh, which is just, uh, uh, you can Google GenBank. Uh, the link is given here at the top of my screen um, and you'll get this landing page, okay? Um, we need to search for a gene, not a nucleotide. So I'm gonna select this box and I'm going to scroll down. I've got a whole list of things here we need not concern ourselves with right now. Uh, and I'm just gonna select gene, okay? So down to the, the, the search menu and select gene. Now, following the instructions from um, Alert, the Allert and Mindorf textbook, I'm going to look for the COX-1 gene across a few different species. And I'm going to start by looking for COX-1 in pan, genus name for the uh, chimpanzee and the pygmy chimpanzee. So I'm going to click search now, uh, and I should get a link or a list of um, the, the genes here that, that is available in the database. Um, so you can see you've got chimpanzee and the pygmy chimpanzee and a few others. Uh, I'm just gonna stick with the first one, COX-1 in the, in the chimpanzee. So I'm clicking on that link. This will take us to information uh, about this specific gene. 
Okay, so this is, our, this is the information about our gene. What we need for our purposes is under the genomic regions, transcripts and products. Uh, there's a link that says go to nucleotide. I'm going to click on the fast A and this will give me a readout of the nucleotide sequence for this gene. And here it is. Um, now, we need to copy all of this. So I'm going to just uh, highlight all the information there, including the, the header at the top. And I'm just going to press um, copy. Okay. Now, take that and we're going to paste that into our text file. All right. And um, just to tidy things up a little bit, I'm going to delete this, the number here. Um, and I'm going to put uh, an underscore between pan and troglodytes. Uh, and then uh, delete this information. It'll just make the display of our um, information in the cluster arc program a little bit neater. Okay, so I've prepared the one al already, a bit like Blue Peter. Uh, so I've got my pan, and I've got a few other species here. So the Neanderthal, uh, polar bear, um, the uh, modern human, the fruit fly, and the, uh, the uh, malaria-carrying mosquito. So, uh, once I've saved those sequences, um, as, I've, as you can see, I've saved this file already. It's called, call it COX1. Okay. Um, we just, all you need to do to save and text edit is close, and then give yourself a, a name for your file and click save. I'm just going to delete this file because I won't be using it, however. Okay. So, in cluster X, now it's open. Uh, I'm going to go to the menu at the top and under file, I'm going to click load sequences and then I can navigate to my COX1 file uh, that's on my desktop uh, and I'm going to just click open. And there we have some sequences here um, but the last step is we actually need to align these sequences uh, so the program can determine where the um, uh, you know where the actual dif real differences are uh, between the genes. So if I go to alignment and then click so that's um, in the cluster X menu, alignment, and then click do complete alignment. Uh, this will give me uh, an output guide tree. Now this goes back to what I was saying about topic five. So this file could be saved for late use later uh, in the syllabus when we actually come back to look at uh, phylogenetic trees and evolutionary relationships. So I'm going to press OK here uh, to run the alignment. See, it was working away there. And now this program cluster X has aligned our sequences. And this is where we have obviously our, the names of our particular uh, species here. So we've got the Neanderthal and uh, modern human. Um, and now we can actually begin to see uh, where uh, the differences in this gene might lie between different species. Where there's a star at the top indicates that the, the nucleotide is the same. And so you can actually begin to look at how well conserved this gene is um, between different species. And, and, and scientists will actually use uh, the number of differences here to um, map uh, the evolutionary relationships or, or suggest how, how closely related uh, certain species are. So that is it. That's all you need really to uh, look at this skill uh, for topic uh, International Baccalaureate Biology, um, Diploma Biology Topic 3.1, the skill one of using a database to determine differences in the base sequence of a gene of two species. Thank you for listening. If you like what you see, you can follow uh, me on Twitter at my Twitter handle at WRPVincent. Thanks very much.